Hey everybody, this is Rosh, and you are watching Helix Basics. This is a YouTube tutorial series I'm putting together to help uh, new and experienced users program their Line 6 Helix. So a little about myself, once again, my name is Rosh. I build and program a lot of guitar rigs out here in the LA area, as well as on the internet. Uh, would love to help you out in person or remotely. So um, some of my clients include Steve Vai, Def Leppard, Melissa Etheridge, A Perfect Circle, Kylie Minogue, Maroon 5, and more. Um, so I want to put this tutorial series together to help new and experienced users program their Line 6 Helix. So if you've been watching this YouTube uh, channel, you are probably aware that I definitely have been programming a lot of Fractal rigs. I've put a lot of content out there for all the Fractal products, including the FM3, the XFX3, and the FM9. Uh, and one of the things is that I actually program a lot of different guitar rigs using a lot of different modelers. So I'm very familiar with the Kemper, the Quad Cortex, and in this case, the Line 6 Helix. So I've definitely done a bunch of Helix rigs as well. And again, I wanted to, you know, give back to the community out there and show some tips and tricks on how to program the Helix. There's a lot of things that um, every modeler can benefit from. There's a lot of, you know, common practices that you would want to get the best guitar tones live and in the studio and in any situation that you have. So again, uh, I wanted to also put this tutorial series together for the Line 6 Helix. So, uh, in this video, what we're going to be covering is actually how to edit each of the effects in here. So again, if you need some navigation basics, uh, I would definitely watch the previous video and you can see some of that. Um, so in this case, here we have the uh, you know factory preset uh, US double normal, which is basically like a Fender twin. Um, and so if you wanted to maybe you know edit this effect, uh, edit this preset, you know adjust some of your own effects. Right here, we're going to hit the stop mode, and you can see that we have these type of effects that are uh, currently in there. So we have the red squeeze, it's compressor, we have the optical trim, it's tremolo, we have a transistor tape. So let's say hypothetically you're like, well, I don't really want a compressor in this preset. You want to put an overdrive or something in there. So the first thing that you're going to do is you want to navigate to um, the effect that you want to do. Now, you can totally do this in the editor. Uh, this video is going to be doing... Um, all the editing from the front panel. And again, um, I personally feel like the editor is much quicker if you're dialing in a preset from scratch. But again, I wanted to show the basics, the absolute bare bones basics, as if you just pulled the Helix right out of the box and just uh, started playing around with it. So uh, what we're going to do is <clears throat> each of these icons represents a type of block. So for example, this thing right here, it looks like a little purple petal. It's, you know, basically your wah anything with this type of uh, gradient is basically dealing with volume. And in this case, where it says dynamics, this is going to be things dealing with the compressor. And you can get familiar with some of these icons. That's like the amp icon. And this is the, you know, delay icon, this is speaker icon. This is kind of a modulation icon. So that's going to cover things like the choruses, the tremolos, etc. And then the square right here is going to cover uh, all the different types of reverbs that are present in the Helix. So if you want to adjust or edit any of these effects, instead of, let's say, using the red squeeze type of compressor, first thing that you're going to want to do is use the joystick and you want to navigate to whatever the effect that you want to edit. And you want to press down on the joystick. And now it's going to give you the options to pick whatever type of effect block you want. So for example, you're going to use the joystick and you can navigate down through here the different type of compressors in this case. So we were originally on the red squeeze. It's a different certain type of compressor. And we can, of course, pick different type of compressors using the navigation. And of course, down here at the bottom, there's some gates and everything like that, as well as some swelling. You can pick any of these type of compressor types, and they all kind of function in a different way. Now, if we use this joystick to navigate between each column, what we can do is, of course, we can also pick the different types, it, it, whether it's a mono or stereo effect, depending on the effect. Some might be um, mono or stereo. And then if we go down to legacy, these are also, um, you know, effects that were present in some of the other earlier Line 6 products, like, you know, the uh, uh, MM4, DL4, all that kind of stuff. So we can see all this kind of thing. Um, these are compressor types based on those older, more legacy Line 6 products. And of course, if we navigate 
currently right now you can see it's in bold we are currently in the second column if we navigate all the way to this column we can of course pick different types of effects now so we have distortion and you can see the icon right next to it is going to indicate what type uh, is going to indicate the block type so it's probably good to get familiar with what those little icons mean so that when we're back in the preset you can tell which um, effects are turning on and off so just as I said earlier in this tutorial let's say we wanted to not use a compressor but we wanted to put an overdrive in there so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick the distortion the distortion block has all the different types of overdrives and once we select that it's in bold right now we're going to press down on the joystick and again in the second column we get to pick what type of um, distortion block that we're going to use whether it's a mono stereo or legacy let's just pick mono for now and then now you're going to have a choice in this list of different types of drives and again each of these overdrives is going to be different they're going to have different parameters that you can see so for example the minotaur which is based on the clon it's going to have gain tone and level but if we go here the tima we have all this kind of thing and again this the tima is kind of based on the Timmy overdrive. So these are going to be kind of giving more of the parameters that are um, on the original pedal. And again, you can see down here. So for example, if we want an overdrive, Scream 808 is like a tube screamer. Um, and we can adjust the gain, the tone, the level, etc. So let's pick the tube screamer. And what we want to do is we want to press down on this joystick to pick the tube screamer. And then now you can see that the compressor has now been released, uh, replaced by the Scream 808. Now, the cool thing is, again, you can use any of these three knobs right here to adjust how much of the gain, level, and tone that you need for the Tube Screamer. And you can, of course, bypass the effect if you need to by pressing this foot switch. So pretty simple, um, very intuitive. If you want to adjust any of the effects, you can adjust the Tube Screamer right there. You can, of course, adjust this on the fly now keep in mind that the effect is a bypass, but again, it's just like reaching down with your traditional pedal board that you can go down, turn the knob at will, but it's still bypassed and then turn it on whenever you need it. So we'll do this again. Let's say we, instead of using a transistor tape delay, you know, we wanna use a different type of delay. So for example, again, we'll just go through this really quickly. I'm going to press the joystick. I'm going, we're currently in the third column and we want to pick whatever effect we want. Let's say we still want to do the, a delay. We just want to change the type of delay. So what we can do, of course, is we have the delay highlighted and you can see that it's bold as opposed to right there. You can, of course, look for that arrow. I'm going to hit the joystick to the right and we have mono, stereo, and legacy. Let's just pick a mono delay for the time being. And then again, instead of using transistor tape, let's pick a different one. So let's use mod chorus echo. Um, we're going to press down on the joystick right here and then now you can see that it is mod chorus echo we can of course bypass it or engage it and again when we select it using the joystick right here um, you can see that we have all the parameters that we can adjust with um, these knobs right here now again for certain type of effects uh, for example the time right there the time is going to be based on the tap tempo so for example if we have quarter notes right there um, that means every tap is going to have one echo repeat and again this tap can be adjusted and then you can see that now the flashing has gotten a little faster that means the quarter notes will happen and again these are just different subdivisions that we can pick so we can pick eighth notes so if it's tapping at that tempo right here then the repeats would be da 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 so or if we go to quarter notes for example then it'll still be bum, 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 bum. I'm not doing that perfectly in time, but you get the idea. So again, really simple if we want to adjust um, any of the parameters. Now, instead of navigating with the joystick, you can, of course, press the effect that you want. And then you'll see that it'll also bring up the effect parameters. So for example, if I just kind of lightly put my thumb or your finger on the switch that it's there, it'll automatically, whoops, it'll automatically uh, 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 select that and then you can adjust the parameters as well instead of using the navigation. So that's also pretty uh, intuitive right there. 
So you can see again, if I want to adjust the optical tremolo, I'm going to lightly, I'm not pushing down on the foot switch. I'm just resting my finger right there or my thumb. And you can see that it's going to pick that. And then you can again adjust things. So this makes it really quick to make quick adjustments. Let's say I want to adjust something on the spring reverb. Again, not pushing the switch down, but just doing a light tap. And then now it's going to select that. And then we can pick any of the parameters that we want to adjust. Let's just say, oh, the decay is too long. We're going to turn that down. Maybe we want to adjust the scream 808 and we want to turn the gain up and the level up. You can do those kinds of things as well instead of using the, uh, the joystick navigation. So those are the two ways to select that. Um, there are definitely a lot of different uh, options that you have to adjust any parameters here on the Helix, but for the sake of this video, we're going to just do that. So uh, without further ado, that's going to wrap it up for this video. Thanks for watching. Uh, if you guys need any one-on-one -on -one help, I would love to help you. So feel free to contact me directly, and I'll see you next time. I'm falling with you. I'm standing